once again, we welcome you to Stouffer Gym in Thibodeau. Nichols rolling on with the second of its three-game Southland Conference opening home swing as they get set to take on the Lamar Cardinals. Nichols trying to bounce back after a tough loss Saturday to Sam Houston State and doing it again under their friendly confines of a home court where they have been terrific and have not lost back-to-back -back games at home since early January of last year. A pleasant good evening, everyone. Jack Benjamin with you once again, and pleased to be joined today by Paul Boron making his Nichols Colonel Sports Radio Network debut. Paul, great to have you on hand for what uh, should be a fun one here tonight. Great to be with you, Jack, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, 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 I feel a big bounce back effort by Nichols tonight. I, I think this is setting up. They've been playing a lot better the last couple of games, and uh, I think their reward is by a victory maybe tonight. Well, as we set the stage here, Colonels come in 2-5. and five. Again, 0-1 in Southland play. A 84-81 loss to Sam Houston State that we'll talk about in just a second on Saturday. Lamar, meanwhile, 2-8, and 0-1 oh in the Southland. And of Beaumont, Texas, they were picked to finish 6th in the Southland Conference preseason poll off a season where they went 17-15 and 15 and 10 and 10, good for a tie for sixth in Southland play last year. They actually got off to a terrific start in the Southland Conference Tournament, beating McNeese by 21 points before the season was cut short due to COVID. Had they been able to play their quarterfinal matchup in that Southland Tournament, some of you may remember it would have been against Nichols, but of course that one did not happen. Meanwhile, as we look at the Colonels here, Paul, five game losing streak after winning their first two in the Bay Area, they lose their final three. They come back home. They are about maybe 30, 35 minutes or so from going to Baylor. We get shut down for 25 days. Mm -hmm. A good quality return in Baton Rouge after 25 days off. Six-point tight loss. Three-point loss to Sam Houston State. And that was a game on Saturday where they jumped out to a 20-6 to six lead early. They were 9 for 12 from three. They couldn't miss. Shots started to drop. So shots started to not fall, I should say. And well, here, you, here they are, 0-1 in and South and playing, really needing a win tonight. Yeah, and I think... You mentioned those last two games. I think that's the reason for optimism. They've played really well those last couple games. I, I feel like the game against Sam Houston, that 10-minute that stretch right before halftime was really what kind of do doomed them last time out. Otherwise, other than some turnovers, I thought they played pretty well. So I, I feel like even though it's a five-game losing streak, they're trending in the right direction after their last couple performances. So Nichols, 2-5, and five, that game against Sam Houston State we talked about. They shot 47% from the floor. Sam Houston State just a point higher percentage-wise. They did finish 36% from three, but 12 for 33, a game where they started 9 for uh, 12 from three-point range. They finished 3 for 21, so not quite the clip you want to close out a game. And Sam Houston, meanwhile, this was really something that didn't talk a whole lot in postgame to Austin Clutch about because rightfully so. He was a little angry <laughs> after that loss, but... Uh, you allow Sam Houston to make 12 three-pointers on 24 tries. The defense today has to be a lot better, especially against a team like Lamar that can shoot the three, and they've got a guy in Davion Buster who made 95 threes a year ago. Yeah, in his post-game comments, <laughs> while they were abbreviated, what did he say twice? we got to guard better. And that was that was the case. they got to get a little, little tighter defensively, and against Davion Buster, a guy who's averaging 17 points a game, they've got to be up in his face and take it away from him. But Lamar also has four other guys in double figures. So, you know, you can't just concentrate on Buster uh, because they can spread it around a little bit. Yeah, you mentioned three, uh, four players right now averaging double figures for a Lamar team that, again, went 17-15, and 15, 10 and 10 in South and play a year ago. We'll get more into them as we go. We'll get more into Nichols. We'll set the stage. We'll get you starters, all that and more. But first, come back with Austin Clanch here from Nichols' head man. His team has lost five consecutive games. Hasn't had a streak like this since his first year as the head man in Thibodeau. It's been different. A team that had heavy expectations, picked fourth in preseason, coming off a 21-win season, trying to bounce back here tonight against Lamar. Uh, Austin Clanch, Nichols' head coach, around the corner. We'll take a break on the pregame show. Nichols and Lamar coming up and around the top of the hour here on the Colonel Sports Radio Network.
Okay.
Back at Thibodeau getting set for tip, Nichols and Lamar. As the Colonels try to even up their Southland record at one and one. Jack Benjamin, Paul Boron back with you. Why don't we get you the starting lineups for tonight brought to you by Louisiana's Cajun Bayou, just 35 minutes south of New Orleans. You'll remember LaFouche. So Lamar, again, comes in at 2-8. and eight. They're 0-1 in Southland play off a 83-65 loss again against a terrific Abilene Christian team on Saturday. Boy, Abilene just has it rolling this season. They're 9-2. and two. They are looking like a prime option to make a deep run in March. But right now, Lamar trying to bounce back on the road, a place here at, in Nichols where they are 10-8 and eight all time. And here's how they will line up. Same lineup that they have used over the past six games. Actually, I should say the past five games. In the backcourt, it is Ellis Jefferson. He's the six-foot point guard, fifth-year senior out of San Antonio, transferred in from Clarendon College in Texas a couple years back. He's sixth in the South and an assist and fifth in assist to turnover ratio. Also in the backcourt, Kaysen Harrison. They play four guards, by the way. Kaysen Harrison is a six-foot-one freshman from Beaumont out of United High School. Only a two-star product coming out, but a very talented player. He didn't play the first three games of the season. He was banged up. Over his last four, he's been in double figures each game, 12 and a half points, shooting 51% from the floor. And then Anderson Cobb is a 6'6 sophomore from Houston, went to St. Thomas, three-star product coming out. He had a couple of good games against Nichols last year. He's second on the team in scoring, a shade north of 11 per game. His first three this season, without Davion Buster in the lineup, he averaged a little over 11 points per game. And now we have the national anthem going on right now, so we'll have to just uh, continue through this. We apologize. Also in the backcourt rounding it out is Davion Buster. He's the uh, junior guard out of Austin, Texas. Five foot ten, and he averages 17 points per game, good for third in the Southland Conference. And then rounding out the starting lineup for Lamar, Avery Sullivan. Six eight senior out of Pflugerville, Texas, a center. 9.9 .9 points, 7.4 rebounds per game. He's second in the Southland in that category. Last year, 8.2 rebounds per was good for third in the conference. The head coach of Lamar is Tick Price, seventh season overall. He's 104 and 103, 56 and 69 in Southland play. He's 17 wins shy of tying the late great Billy Tubbs, who actually uh, passed away in early November after his battle with leukemia. We wish his family all the best. He's currently fourth on the wins list at Lamar, only 17 wins back. Apologies for a little bit of a delay there for the anthem. Meanwhile, for Nichols, 2-5, 0-1 and and in Southland play. Losers of five consecutive games. First time that has happened since early January of 2019. They will go with another different starting lineup. So they've played now, well, this will be their eighth game this season. They've used now six different starting lineups. And this is how they look in the backcourt. It is uh, Andre Jones making his second start of the season. Fifth-year senior at a Little Rock is averaging just five and a half points per. He averaged a shade north of 12 per last season. Jalen Forns comes back into the starting lineup. 6'3", redshirt senior from Pamlico County who missed the LSU game due to some knee soreness. Transfer from UNC Wilmington averaging a shade south of eight per. And then Kevin Johnson, senior guard out of Thibodeau, 7.5 points per game. Season high 17 last time out, Paul, against Sam Houston on Saturday. Yeah, and I'm looking for more of the same out of Kevin Johnson. He really was a spark in that second half and uh, nearly led the Colonels to victory on uh, Saturday night. Front court looks like this. Najee Garvin has started all seven so far. 10.7 points per, seven rebounds per for the redshirt junior out of Lexington, South Carolina. And then Raji Lyons rounds it out. Senior out of slide L, 6'10", 280. Only 17 minutes due to foul trouble against Sam Houston. He was their team best plus 15, but with him off the court, Paul, minus 18. So that'll be a, a big key today for Nichols as well. Austin Clotch is the head coach of Nichols, third season, 37 and 32. Mark, he's 22 and 17 in Southland play. Took his first loss in the Southland opener on Saturday against Sam Houston. We'll take a break quickly for 60. We're back in a minute. Get you ready for a tip. Nichols and Lamar around the corner on the Colonel Sports Radio Network.
set for tip, Nichols and Lamar. Jack Benjamin, Paul Boron with you. The starters have been introduced. The two teams getting set to take the floor. Colonels, losers of five straight. You never like to use the word must win, Paul, this early in a season, but boy, when you're Nichols with the schedule they had laid out, no SFA on the schedule, no Abilene and Christian, the two favorites in the conference. This is one you better have at home to get back to one and one before a, a Southeastern game on Saturday. Well, especially in the middle of a three game stretch at home, you want to take advantage of these home dates and they almost did on Saturday. Uh, Lamar only with two wins as well. So this feels like a game the Colonels could get tonight and really feels like they need to get. Again, Nichols is 2-5, and 0-1 oh in Southland play after the loss to Sam Houston. Saturday, Lamar also 0-1 oh in Southland play after losing to Abilene Christian. Both teams on the floor. Nichols home whites, red numbering, lettering and trims and black on the shorts. And Lamar in their road blacks with the white numerals and lettering and some red trim down the sides. Our officials for today, Lucas Santos, Earl Lenny, Bo Melanson. It's uh, Avery Sullivan and... Raji lines to jump center. Lines controls the tip to Andre Jones. We're underway. The Colonels trying to get back to one and one in Southland play and stop a five game losing streak. Najee Garvin right baseline floats it up. It's short. Offensive rebound. Raji lines and powers it up and in off the glass for two. So a good start for Raji. Only 17 minutes on Saturday due to foul trouble. And Nichols a quick two nothing advantage. 30 seconds gone. Davion Buster, the crafty junior out of Austin, Texas, handles. He averages 17 points per game, good for third in the Southland. Down low, Avery Sullivan off a nice cut, right block, up off the glass and good. And we're tied at two, about 40 seconds in. Andre Jones making his second start, wheels into the front court, right wing Jalen Forns. Off a screen, works to the top, now down the left alley, glides in, righty scoop shot, slides off the back side of the iron. And Davion Buster outlets to Ellis Jefferson on the right wing. Down low, Avery Sullivan, who had a career-high 24 last year in this building against Nichols. Anderson Kopp with it. He's a sophomore. Now Buster, quick release on a right-wing triple. It's good. That has to feel good for Davion Buster. Last year against Nichols in two games, he was 3 for 15 from 3. You heard Paul on the pregame. Austin caught saying, hey, we got a little bit lucky last year with how poorly he shot it. Yeah, and you can't give him the space that he just had there, and he knocks down the 3. 5-2, Lamar leads. 90 seconds elapsed here in Thibodeau. Andre Jones against Buster's size advantage to the baseline. Left hand, no. Tip won't go. Second try is good. That's just persistence from Jones. And the fifth-year senior from Little Rock makes the one-point game. Harrison down the lane. Oh. Swatted away viciously by Raji Lyons. Up ahead, Andre Jones to Garvin. And he just fired that one too hard. Out of it comes Lamar and Jefferson. Up ahead, it's Harrison. Lefty pulls up on the baseline and swishes through a 12-footer. And that's just a tough turn of events for Nichols. you got a two-on-one, you don't convert. And they, they made him pay going down the floor quickly and taking advantage on the break. 7-4 Lamar, two minutes gone. Johnson post-feed right block Garvin, and he's fouled by Anderson Kopp. First foul of the game comes at the 17-54 mark of the first half. Kopp's first, sophomore out of Houston, Texas. And that's something Nichols is going to have all day there. They will have size advantages. Garvin at 6'7", 210 against Kopp, who's given up about 15, 20 pounds. Nichols inbounds to Jones. Top of the arc, two minutes gone, down 7'4". Jones against Jefferson comes up short with a floater moving to his left in the lane. Out of the pack, Harrison for Lamar. Up ahead, Kopp pulls up 12-footer. Inside the left elbow, splash. And Lamar has gotten off to a great start here on the road. They're four for five. And they have a five-point advantage at 9-4. Two and a half minutes gone, first half in Thibodeau. Nichols 13-1 at home last year, 9-1 in Southland play, but they dropped their Southland Conference opener in this building on Saturday. Raji Lyons, right block against Sullivan. Rush that floater with the righty hook. It's short. Cop rebounds. Lamar wants to push. Cop finds Harrison. Doesn't shoot the three. Works inside the paint. Jefferson touch pass. Buster right corner triple. Nichols got away with one there. Right in front of the Colonel bench. He came up short. And here comes Kevin Johnson for Nichols. Season high 17 for KJ Saturday. Pulls up on a right wing three. He's off the back of the iron. And there's a foul called on the floor. Good job by Jalen Forbes to draw a foul. And with 16.51 to go in the first half. Let's see if that one's on. And it goes against. Now who was it? I know Tick Price wasn't happy. He thought Forns had gone over the back there, and uh, the Cardinals uh, yeah, they called not on happy Buster. about yeah, it. Yeah, they called on Buster. Ty Gordon and Jeremiah Buford check in for Nichols. 
So Garvin and Jones sit. 16-49 first half. Nichols down 9-4. Raji backing inside. Kick out Ty Gordon. Averaging a team high 13.9. Here's Raji, left elbow jumper in and out. And Ellis Jefferson rebounds. Pass up ahead, Avery Sullivan running the floor. Dropped the ball, got it back, muscled it up and in off the glass. And Lamar has an 11-4 start here in Thibodeau. They have played already this season seven road games. They're one in six. They've lost three straight on the road as Lamar, but looking good here at Stouffer. Jeremiah Buford averaging 14 and a half per his last two, drives toward the middle of the lane, floats it up and misses off the right side of the iron. Sullivan rebounds, here comes Davion Buster. Approaching four gone first half and a quick moving first half. 11-4 Lamar leads. Jefferson down the lane, double pump layup is good. That's a strong move off the glass. Austin Clauch wants an early timeout with 15.59 to go. Lamar is six for eight from the floor and they have a nine point advantage. Opposite of what we saw Saturday against Sam Houston for Nichols where they jumped out quickly. 13 for Lamar, 15-59 first half. The Cardinals have started six of eight from the floor on the Colonel Sports Radio Network. Back in Thibodeau, Nichols and Lamar, 15.59 to go first half. 8-0 run for the Cardinals. They lead Nichols 13-4. Jack Benjamin and Paul Boron back with you. The Colonels 2 for 10 to start. Lamar is 6 for 8 and getting pretty much anything they want right now at the rim, Paul. Yeah, they're uh, they're getting out in transition, and uh, the Colonels have got to get back defensively because uh, right now the Cardinals are making them pay in transition. They've gotten a couple of baskets going to the hoop, and they've hit a couple pull-up jumpers. Anderson Cobb hit that uh, 18 footer a little while ago and so uh, the Colonels just got to get back defensively off their missed shots. Six of the 13 Lamar points are in the paint. 13-4 Lamar, 15-59 first half. Couple subs are on for Nichols. Damian Sears has checked in. The senior out of Houghton. So Gordon Buford Johnson along with Forns and Sears the five for Nichols as they attack the left hoop down by a nine. Colonels are two for 10, they're one for their last eight. And now a switching 2-3 zone for Lamar. Shot clock down to 10, Gordon three feet beyond the arc straight away, missed it off to the left and short. Jefferson rebounds, baseball pass ahead to Buster. Touch pass cop, passed up a left wing three. Extra feed Jefferson, right wing triple up and off the front of the iron. And a foul called on the floor against Damian Sears. So that's his first, and the team's now, let's see, team's uh, second now, and Lamar will trigger left baseline. Harrison looking inbound, finds Cop against Gordon, and back outside to Jefferson. Starter's still out there for Lamar. Here's Anderson, Cop to the elbow, floater is good. Just inside the right elbow, Anderson, Cop, impressive looking sophomore out of Houston, and it's a double digit lead for Lamar, 15 to four. Wide open Ty Gordon, right wing triggers a three, it spins out, and boy, Nichols just can't buy one right now. Anderson Cop, Lamar with it, attacking the right basket. He wants Harrison on a dribble weave. Couple subs getting set to check in for Nichols. Austin Clonch just trying to find a unit that can put some points on the board. Harrison down the left alleyway, double pump layup against Johnson is long. Offensive rebound by Cop. Right corner, feeds right elbow to Jefferson and a reaching foul called on Kevin Johnson. That's his first and the team's third. And now a couple subs coming on, and Quavius Pollard, Andre Jones, and Garvin back in. They replace Buford, Forns, and Sears.
14-40 first half, 15-4 lead for Lamar with the ball. Nichols is two for 12 from the floor. Cop looking, finds Buster. Out high on the left, works his way baseline behind the back to Sullivan. Left elbow mid-range, he can shoot that, but he comes up short. Garvin rebounds up the floor, comes Gordon. Cross-court feed to Garvin, takes Sullivan off the bounce, goes inside, righty floater is short. Pollard offensive rebound, throws it all the way near midcourt to Jones. Skips it left corner, Johnson, touch pass Gordon. Around the horn to Jones again at the right. Shot clock down to 10, beautiful rotation from Lamar. Garvin misses a three, offensive rebound, and Quavius Pollard back up and in. And that ends what was a four-minute scoring drought, Paul, for Nichols. They're back with a 9-15-6. Yeah, they're having a hard time getting anything to go in, but good uh, second-chance effort there. Down low, they find Sullivan right block. He got great position on Garvin, who is fronting him, and Sullivan has another field goal. He's got now six. Remember, he had 24 points, a career high last year against Nichols in Thibodeau. Jones drives right, left baseline, out of control, misses a floater. Lamar with numbers if they hurry. Jefferson to Buster. Left wing tries a triple. He's got a fast release. It's barely in his hands before <laughs> it's out and up. And here comes Ty Gordon for Nichols. Up the floor, down 11. Garvin, right baseline, 12-footer good. So Najee Garvin knocks that one down. Good sign for a guy who has really struggled his last couple of games. And Nichols is back with a nine. Cop pull up. Front iron from about 15 feet away straight on, and Garvin has the rebound and hands off to Andre Jones. So the pace slowing down a little bit now. 17-8 Lamar leads. We're under the 13-minute mark of the first half. Pollard against the 2-3 zone. Gordon right wing triggers a three, and Nichols now 0 for 5 from deep. Remember, they finished the Sam Houston game 3 for 21, so do the quick math. The three for the last 26 ball from three. Yeah, they're struggling from long range. A couple of those shots have been really long range. Gordon and uh, Garvin, a, a couple of possessions ago, really pulling from long range. Approaching 12 and a half to go first half. Buster, tough floater with the right hand, kind of Steph Curry-esque, but rebounded by Sullivan off the front iron miss. Harrison to Buster, left corner three, you bet. Boy, he can really shoot it. He made 95 threes a year ago. Good for ninth in Division I basketball. And Lamar's got an 11-point lead again. 19 to 8, approaching 12 to go. Pollard tries a three straight away. That one is short. Nichols is 0 for 6. They're 4 for 19 from the floor. Buster giving room to fire again for the left wing and drills another one. Well... You know, it's interesting because you look at the scouting report from Lamar. He's the one guy you cannot allow to get going. And, of course, after telling Austin Clodge in the pregame interview how well they did in him last year, he has already come out and he shot the lights out in this first half. He's got already now 12 points. Yeah, that one five, five feet beyond the arc, just pulling up and knocking it down. Uh, from Nichols' perspective, you know, they're falling in love with the three a little bit here, and they're not knocking him down. I, I think the chances they've had have been going to the basket and even getting some second chance points. So I think right now Austin Klontz has got to tell his guys, let's go to the basket a little bit. You know, we mentioned it before. The Colonels just are not getting enough at the free throw line, uh, only averaging 15 attempts a game. And so they've, they've got to find some points inside, whether it's in the paint or at the line, to try and chip away at this a little bit. Because right now, from long range, it's not working for the Colonels, and it is for Davion Buster. <laughs> So you add in the 3-for-21 to an 0-for-6 start. Nichols is now 3-for-27. They came in this season shooting 32% from three. You know, one of the big numbers, we didn't talk at all about the head-to-head -head matchup between these two teams yet, Paul, but last year Nichols won both beatings. They were both defensive struggles, 61-52 in Beaumont, and then a, uh, a close one again at home, 69-65 uh, in Thibodeau. In those two games, Nichols shot 43% from three, and they didn't take many. They did it efficiently. It's a situation here where you've got athletes who can get to the rim. You make a good point. Why settle so much the way they have? Well, and you talked about a little bit of a size advantage as well for the Colonels. So, yeah, right now it's not going down from long range. Attack the basket. Just chip away a little bit. You you can't get it all back right away. And, and that's almost like the, that's the mindset right now for Nichols is, is let's, let's chip away from the three-point line. I, I want to see him go to the basket. So out of the timeout, 11.59 to play first half here in Thibodeau. If you're just joining us, second of a three-game Southland Conference opening homestand for Nichols. They lost by three to Sam Houston State 
on Saturday. That stopped the seven-game home win streak. They were 13-1 and at home last year, so this is a big one early on in the slate. Couple subs in for Sam Houston. David Muwaka is in, the sophomore out of Hong Kong, who actually leads the conference in blocks. So they get a little rim protection out there, and also they have checked in Quinlan Bennett, Jr. from Chicago. Jones, Gordon, along with Lyons, Johnson, and Pollard for Nichols, and a beautiful backdoor feed. Jones to Pollard, they caught the zone napping baseline, and Nichols is back within 13, 23-10. Buster had the ball knocked out of his hands on the right sideline, so stays with Lamar, 11-38 first half, 13-point lead for the Cardinals. Pierce Spencer in, Ty Gordon out. Pierce did not play Saturday against Sam Houston. He played two minutes, didn't score against LSU a week ago from Saturday. There's a drive by Harrison, who's fouled. Lions, I believe, got him. And, you know, those are the kind of fouls I think if you're Austin Clunch, you'll live with for Aji Lions, contesting shots. It's the it's the little ticky-tack ones that he can't have. And he's such a valuable rim protector for this team. Yeah, he almost went straight up there, just kind of brought the arm down right at the end. Uh, and and uh, like you said, I think that's a, a foul that you can live with. Kaysen Harrison at the line, knocks in the first free throw. Lamar has a 24-10 lead. 11.33 first half, Forns in, Pollard out. Cop comes back in. So one more for Case and Harrison, 82% free throw shooter, sixth in the Southland. Lamar as a team, terrific from the line. There's 73%, good for third in the conference coming in. Harrison, the lefty, makes both. It's 25 to 10. Under 11 and a half to go first half. Kevin Johnson with it down the lane. Kick out Spencer. Catch and shoot right wing three. Around off and back in. And Pierce drops in a triple. That's his second three-pointer of the season. He had five in short action against St. Mary's in the finale of the Bay Area road trip. And the Colonels are back within a dozen. Nice to see a long-range shot go down for the Colonels. And maybe that will get them going from the arc. About time. Felt like a century, but it's only been two games. It's about a game and a half, I should say. One for seven now from three is Nichols. Cop pump fake left wing, steps inside the arc, misfires on a 17-footer, another offensive rebound, but it went through the hands of Muwaka. Jones diving into the scorer's table, and they will say it's staying with Lamar. That's great hustle, though, by Andre Jones along the table. A couple of subs coming back in for Lamar. They'll only go about eight or nine deep for Tick Price, a team that has been ravaged by some injuries and some illness this season. You know, their record of 2-8 and eight doesn't really say how good this team is, Paul, because Davion Buster, their leading scorer, didn't even play the first four games with a hamstring injury. And on top of that, they've been road warriors. They've only had two games at home at the Montaigne Center, so uh, it's, been a, it's been a rough road for the Cardinals, and uh, there is certainly some talent on this team. And you wonder how much home court advantage plays a role in COVID times, but it's a factor in this conference when you've got to take six- to nine-hour bus rides mm -hmm. every time out. Buster, meanwhile, goes down the lane. Scoop shot, no. Boy, Lions <laughs> almost tipped that one in on the rebound try, but it comes off, and the outlet pass to Kevin Johnson. Up the right side of the floor, gallops down the lane. Floater crawls over the front of the iron and drops through. So KJ's got a second, uh, making his first points. Nichols back within 10. Bennett, kick out, cop left wing. Lamar resets. 25-15 lead, approaching the midway point of the first half. Jefferson peels off a screen, takes Jones down to the left alleyway, and... Backs out now to the left angle. Almost lost the ball. Pass in front of the Nichols bench to Bennett. Takes Spencer inside. Falls away from 8-0. No. Spencer fell down to his backside. Got back up and got the rebound in time. Athletic maneuver there for the freshman out of Houston. I should say Porter, Texas for Pierce. Johnson to Forns. Right baseline drive against Cop. Hangs. Banks at home. That's a good sign if he can get Jalen Forns going. He had 18 in the opener against UC Davis. Has been quiet since. And let's see, Austin Clunch wants a timeout here with 9.35 to go in the first half. Interesting with a little momentum building, but maybe trying to reset the defense a little bit, get something set. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. 25-17 Lamar, 9.35 first half. Paul, anything sticking out to you on the stat sheet right now? Well, right now, as you mentioned, they're not knocking it down from three-point range, but their, their shooting percentage has already gone up. Uh, they were shooting at 21%, now up to 34%, and I think that goes hand-in-hand hand with the last couple possessions. Going to the basket, some, some short-range shots other than uh, Pierce Spencer's three-point shot. You saw KJ going to, to the uh, basket, and so I think keep doing more of that, and then you're going to get that Lamar defense to collapse a little bit, and you'll get some more open looks as opposed to those long-range prayers. <laughs> So Nichols, you mentioned the, the cold start they had been under. They were 
four for, what was it, four for 19 to start and have at least picked it up a little bit here. And yeah, it was four for 19 and they've made now four of the last five. So 25-17 the lead for Lamar. If you're just joining us, they have led by as many as 15. It was 25-10, to 10, so a 7-0 run here for the Colonels. Lamar has gone scoreless over the last two minutes or so. Cop, Harrison, Buster, Bennett, and Sullivan are in. For Nichols, Lyons is back in along with Spencer, Johnson, Forns, and Jones. This will be a small ball game you would think throughout given the, the size and the switching with both teams. Sullivan, high post left against Lyons. Under nine and a half to go now in the first half. Lamar has cooled off a little bit from the floor. They're 10 of 21 after starting out red hot. Buster leads all scores with nine to the left wing. Cross court pass stolen away by Andre Jones. Up ahead, Kevin Johnson dashes down the lane to the line. Layup is good. High off the window for two. Back to back hoops for Kevin Johnson. Colonels with nine in a row to get back within 6 25 19. All started by great defense by Andre Jones. Starts the transition, and KJ puts it away. 25 19, under nine to go. First half in Thibodeau, where Nichols went 13 and one last year but lost their Southwood home opener on Saturday. Misfire from Cop on a righty floater. Rebound Andre Jones with a running start. Gallops inside, swings it to Spencer. Left corner to Forns now on the left wing. Against Cop, faces up, takes him down, spins inside, lost his footing, and turns it over. Bennett has it, numbers if they hurry. Now he takes it inside on Jones. Wild floater, tough angle to bank that one in. And let's see what the call is here. Is this a warning on the Nichols bench? I think it is. You know, we saw that, Paul, three or four times on Saturday. A bench having to get used to, you can't overstep the boundary. Mm -hmm. You have to stay in your rows. COVID-19 protocol in college basketball has been fascinating. Yep, I've seen that in a few games. Uh, you know, bench is getting a warning that they've got to kind of stay in their, their seat area. So 25-19 Lamar, 8-20 to go first half. Nichols with it, and the white jerseys attacking the left hoop. Jones to Spencer, right corner, triggers a three. No, tip by Forns won't go. Offensive rebound, Johnson, back out Spencer. Touch feed, Forns, right corner, triple. Swirls around and off. That one was halfway down. And here comes Harrison for Lamar. They slow it down up by six. Under eight to go in the first half. Harrison takes Spencer inside, can't shake him. Couple of freshmen going at it, stolen away. Andre Jones, this could be fun to watch. Big right-handed jam in transition. So a Jones jam is third of the season. And Nichols has 11 straight points. Don't look now, they're back within four. 25-21 as we roll towards 7.30 to play. Again, defense sparking it, and uh, they get the transition the other way, and Jones hammers it down. He is a highlight reel waiting to happen. You run out of superlatives sometimes <laughs> with just how athletic he is. Oh, a near steal here. Oh, Austin Clonch is hopping <laughs> mad. And when I say hopping mad, I mean testing out that vertical from back in his Emory days. He's up. He's off the bench. Nichols hyped up. It's a foul on Jones. It'll be his first. And as a team, only the fourth on Nichols. Time out on the floor. 25-21 Lamar. 7-24 to go first half in Thibodeau. But Nichols has 11 consecutive points. Finally have gotten it going here at home on the Colonel Sports Radio Network. Back in Thibodeau, second of a three-game Southland Conference home opening series for Nichols, taking on Lamar and down by 425-21. Alongside Paul Boron, Jack Benjamin with you, 724 first half. This was a 15-point Lamar lead. Nichols has reeled off 11 straight points. 
and Paul doing it on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, really active hands. Uh, you saw Andre Jones create a fast break opportunity, almost did again there, just committing the foul. But uh, the defensive end, the active hands, uh, doing the, the job for the Colonels right now. Approaching seven to go in the first half, 25-21 Lamar. Cardinals have it, attacking the right hoop. They led 25 to 10, and since that point, 11 straight for Nichols. Harrison takes Kevin Johnson inside. Down low finds Isa, who just checked in, and his shot blocked by Garvin. So Tariq Isa, the junior from Toronto, has the shot swatted away, and Nichols can get back within a single possession with a basket here. Have been fighting an uphill battle all game long. Garvin against Isa has him by a couple inches. Skip pass knocked away by Sullivan, but Jones can go in the backcourt to retrieve. Shot clock's all the way down to 10. They're not even to the top of the key. Down to 7, down to 6. Jones to Forns. Right wing passes up a 3. Floater is up. Misses off the front iron. And Bennett rips away the rebound from Forns. Six and a half to play. Opening half. Four point Lamar lead. Bennett down the left alleyway. Backs out to the left wing. Wants the post up. Sullivan can't find him. Ball tipped away. Taken by Forns. Up ahead to Jones. Goes up to bank it home with a righty scoop. I think he wanted to dunk it on Ellis <laughs> Jefferson, but he thought better of it. And Andre Jones makes it 13 straight points for the Colonels to get back within two with six minutes to go in the first half. And again, Jones, active hands, were, were, were started that whole thing. He got the steal and he ends up getting the finish. Havoc defense here. Jefferson, though, gets back door. No contact, but right there to clean it up is Sullivan. And now Jefferson took a shot going down. I don't know if he fell on his midsection or his arm he's down in a whole lot of pain their fifth year senior point guard out of san antonio it looks kind of like that almost like the chest area that he's grimacing and grabbing right now and now he's holding his back now too he's, and his well, now, arm, holding so. it, now it's the wrist <laughs> that's why they say don't speculate on the injury we don't want to he's uh he's shaking it off this is a, a tough kid as tough as it gets well he, in college products he landed hard. Uh, he was trying to draw contact, and there was no contact, and he ended up falling back on his own. And, you know, I think part of it, too, I think Najee Garvin was shocked there wasn't a foul call after his contest that he didn't try to get the rebound, and Sullivan just scoops it up and makes the four-point game. So that means that Kopp comes back in. He's out there with Buster along with Harrison, and then Sullivan and Bennett, the five. Jones, Garvin, Gordon, who just checked back in, along with Johnson and Spencer, the five for Nichols. 5.46 first half, Colonels down 27-23. Kevin Johnson steps back to the right wing against the rangy cop at 6-6. Pull back three on the way, up and off the heel, and Buster has the rebound. Five foot ten junior brings it up court against Pierce Spencer. Pull up straight away three. He knew it was off to the right. Rebound tipped to the hands of Jones. Goes between the legs, out of traffic. Down the lane, hesitating, got fouled, and let's see if they call it in the act of shooting or on the floor. Got to be a shooting foul, I would think. He I was, would think He was so. on his way to the basket. You never know when they're <laughs> leaping from the free throw line in college hoops, whereas in the NBA, you can <laughs> step onto the court and someone breathes on you, and it's a continuation foul. This is shooting for Andre Jones, so free throws upcoming for the fifth-year senior out of Little Rock. He's been terrific making the start today. He's already got six points. He's got two steals. The shooting has been the issue so far from this season. He didn't begin his campaign until Cal, remember. He misses that first free throw. Last year, Andre shot it at 73%. This year, he's now two for five at the line. Not easy to get your feet wet when you have to jump in, you know, three games into the season at Cal like he did, but you figure he's finally starting to find his way. Second free throw is good. He gets one out of two there, and if he's going to attack the basket like he has here in the first half, obviously he's going to start drawing more free throw attempts, and hopefully he'll knock some of those down, and, and that'll be some more hidden points for the Colonels uh, just through his aggressiveness going to the rim. So it's a 14-3 run for Nichols after Lamar led by 15 points. They're back to within three, 27-24 Lamar with five to go in the first half. Backdoor feed, cop to Bennett, almost lost it, kick out Buster, high arcing right corner three in front of the Nichols bench is an air ball, taken away by Ty Gordon. With a three here, the Colonels can tie the game. Spencer back to Gordon, around to Garvin, screen to the top, kick out Jones, passed up a right wing three, got, glides inside, shot blocked away by Harrison, and then a foul called, and a reach in, I believe, on either Jones or Garvin. I think it's Jones. 
Yeah, it looked like a little bit of a frustration foul after he had it poked away from him. Yeah, that's a big one. You don't want him taking the second foul that way in the first half. So Andre's going to sit down here with two fouls, mark it down at the 440 mark. 27-24 Lamar, and they get the ball back here, leading by three. So Nichols goes big now with Lyons and Garvin in there together, out there with a backcourt of Spencer, Johnson, and Ty Gordon. Harrison, Cop, Buster, and then Bennett and Sullivan still the five for Lamar. 4.30 to go first half. Nichols swept the season series last year, looking for a third straight win for the first time since 2013 over Lamar. Harrison against Spencer, kick out Cop left wing. Couple of jab steps on Garvin, who doesn't bite. Now he wants to take him off the dribble to the right elbow, finds Buster, hounded by Kevin Johnson at the right point. Down to three, down to two, contested right wing three is off the left side of the rim. Offensive rebound, Bennett, and a reset at 20. Cop to the free throw line, leaning pull up, no. Another offensive rebound for Lamar. They're just killing Nichols here on the glass. That's now six offensive rebounds for Lamar. They've turned it into uh, seven second chance points, and the Cardinals back up five. 29-24 with 3.50 to go in the opening half in Thibodeau. Ty Gordon unleashes a right wing three. He's been off. Long rebound, goes off the body of Sullivan. Pierce Spencer crashing hard, knocked it out of bounds. And we get the under four media timeout. It's going back to Lamar at the other side of this break. 3.42 to go first half. Nichols used a 13-0 run to get back into it. Lamar, though, keeping their nose in front late in the first half. 29-24 on the Colonel Sports Radio Network. Thibodeau and Nichols has cut what was once a 15-point Lamar lead down to 5. 29-24 with 3.42 to go in the first half. Jack Benjamin, Paul Boron with you. A reminder that at halftime we'll get you scores around the Southland Conference and around the NCAA. And take a look at the first half stats. It's brought to you by Thibodeau Regional Sports Medicine as the halftime, the official sports medicine provider of Nichols Athletics. So Nichols, after a 13-0 run, scoreless the last minute 40. They bring some full-court token pressure here on Lamar, and they get the ball to Bennett to the Cardinals, who pulls up at the free-throw line and drops through a jump shot. Quinlan Bennett Jr. out of Chicago averages 10 per their third-leading scorer coming in, and Lamar back up seven points. 31-24, 3-24 first half. There's a moving screen and an offensive foul on Raji Lyons, the exact kind of fouls that Austin Claunch was talking about in pregame that he can't afford to have. Yeah, just uh, moving just a bit as uh, he tried to set the screen and and free uh, Gordon and ends up getting the foul call. So 3.23 first half, seven-point Lamar lead. It's been as large as 15 points. And now they can run some clock and set up the half-court offense. Cop with it, right point out there with Sullivan, Bennett, and then Harrison and Buster, who's been quiet since the opening minutes when he exploded for nine in the first three or four minutes. Buster right wing against Gordon. Shot clock down to 10. Game clock hits three minutes to play. Cop with it. Shot clock to five to four. Backing down Spencer. Spins. Free throw line. Shot blocked away by Pierce Spencer. What a play by the freshman on the Porter, Texas. Earns an extra possession here for Nichols. 2.47 to go. Down by seven. See if they can make a little push here before the half. Kevin Johnson's been quiet so far. Almost slips. Finds Forns. 
Right wing now on the left side, it's Ty Gordon. Takes to the free throw line. Back outside, Kevin Johnson slips again and travels. I don't know if it's his shoes or a wet spot, but he has slipped three or four times here the last couple minutes. Yeah, we've seen three Nichols players slip in the last couple of minutes, and it's all been in that same general area. I don't see any moisture on the floor, but uh, yeah, that's uh, a couple of times that the Colonels uh, have lost possession because of slipping, and then there were a couple of times they were able to recover, and and so Spencer is uh, wiping things down in the lane, but that's <laughs> not really even where the, the guys were slipping. So I was thinking of two things here. Number one, Pierce Spencer is given, being given the freshman treatment here, <laughs> right? He's right. got to wipe up the sweat <laughs> from someone else. Two, there's a reason why they love Jonathan Terrell, JT, our, our new athletic director here, because he, he goes down from the top row of the bleachers, he sprints down, he finds a towel, and boom, he's on it. He got there fast, going back to his football days when he was a terrific player here with the Colonels. So 2.19 to go in the first half. Seven-point lead for Lamar. Nichols has had chances to cut it closer, but just haven't taken advantage. Sullivan posting on Garvin. Right block goes to the lefty hook, misses off the back iron, and forwards rebounds for Nichols. Could really use a basket here to get a little bit of momentum with two minutes to go in the opening 20 minutes. You can hear Austin Claunch calling out plays from the bench. Kevin Johnson works to the right elbow. Back up top, Ty Gordon. Against Buster, kick out Spencer. Catch and shoot, left corner three. That one missed on an air ball about a foot to the right of the rim. And here comes Harrison, dashes down. Kick out top, touch pass Buster. And right in his face is Garvin. He knows he can't let him shoot. Better rotation there defensively from Nichols. Game clock down to 90 seconds to go in the first half. Lamar's got... 12 to shoot, here's Harrison, gets by Spencer, in the lane, floater rolls around and drops through. Well, you can only hold these guys in check so long. Kaysen Harrison, who has scored in double figures his last four, freshman out of Beaumont, local product, is now up to six in the opening half, and Lamar has built in a nine-point lead. 33-24 with a minute 12 to go before halftime. Ty Gordon has yet to get it going. Najee Garvin straight on against Sullivan, takes him down the lane, and a tough floating right-hander is up and through. With a line drive, Garvin brings it back to within seven for Nichols, 33-26. Yeah, good job by Garvin there, but uh, Lamar has kind of taken away the middle of the paint there because they know the Colonels had had some success inside, and they've really condensed their zone. And they know that Nichols is one for 12 for three. Yeah. Shot clock's down to 10 for Bennett. Takes Spencer inside, gallops in, no with a left. Rebound to Spencer, outlet pass Gordon. Up ahead to Jalen Forns. Down the lane, lefty floater is short, but a foul. And it's a blocking foul, that's a big one. Sullivan picks it up, it's his first. And free throws up coming here for Nichols. Well, we talked about a key Paul being the free throw line. Lamar has taken two, they've made both, and Nichols has taken two and made one, so, so far, it's been a non-factor because there have been so few fouls called, just nine total in this game so far. Yeah, not a lot of whistles. Uh, and obviously, when you get your chances at the line, you gotta take advantage, so Forens has to knock these down. Uh, and hopefully the, after that, the Colonels can put on a little pressure and get a stop right before half. So 32.8 to go in the half. Jalen Forens is at the line for two free throws. Nichols down 33-26. Forns didn't play against LSU due to some soreness, and he misses the first free throw. Boy, that's a rare one for a guy who comes over after three years at UNC Wellington. As a junior there, so you go back to the 2018-19 campaign, he shot 89% at the line, good for second in the Colonial Athletic Association, and in his three years at Wellington, shot 83%. Makes that second one, so splits the pair. He's now seven for nine this season, and Nichols is back within six. 33-27, about a two-second game clock, shot clock difference. Gordon pressuring against Harrison, who almost got by him. Now he does to the paint. Garvin steps in, and they call a blocking foul. Wow. Austin Claunch is pointing to the restricted area, wondering why. And, and that's always a question of when you're doing it on the pass, trying to take the charge, it becomes that much more difficult because your timing has to be almost impeccable. And again, his foot may have been uh, inside that restricted area. And so it's going to end up uh, being a shooting foul. And yeah, you know what? It's a one and one here, Paul. Seventh yep. team foul on Nichols. So one and one for Kaysen Harrison, freshman from Beaumont, who's 81.8% at the line this year. Good for sixth in the conference. Left-hander flicks the wrist and misses the free throw. 
So Nichols a chance to creep a little closer here with a three-pointer they can get within a single possession at the half. A first half that looked like it might spiral out of control when they were down 15. Gordon walks across the timeline. We're down to 10 to go. Down six, Gordon left wing. Down to five, down to four. Tied to KJ with two, with one. Pull up, 20 footer is good. And he runs to the locker room. Austin Claunch gives him a little pat on the chest saying, hey man, you can do that all day long. And Nichols can take a little bit of momentum to the locker room. Down by four at the half, 33-29. Colonels were down 25 to 10 at one point. So you, you do the quick math, and they close the half on a 17-8 push, including a 13-0 run that was right around the 7 or 9-minute mark or so up until about the 4-minute mark. Paul is going to give you the stats from the first half, starting with Lamar. Paul, how'd they look? Well, Lamar, as you mentioned, started out on fire, but ends up at thir just under 39% at 14 of 36. That includes a 3 of 9 from 3-point range. They also did a good job, as you mentioned, on the offensive glass with seven offensive rebounds. Lead scorer is Davion Buster with nine points, but a lot of that was early as the Colonels kind of tightened up defensively on him. Yeah, he missed his last four shots from the floor, and I think he started, if I'm not mistaken, three for four from three, so he missed his final four three-pointers in the half as well. And uh, their second leading scorer is uh, Avery Sullivan. He's got eight points as they have 33, meanwhile, for the Colonels. 13 of 35 shooting, 37%, but the woeful number, 1 of 12, 8.3% from the arc. Uh, the lone three-pointer was from Pierce Spencer, so they've got to uh, find ways to knock down some three-point shots. Uh, some of those were long range, but uh, the one, the few good looks, they aren't knocking down either. Meanwhile, lead scorer, Andre Jones with seven points. He was just fantastic, not only offensively, but he had a couple of steals, and he really pushed the pace and, and helped bring the Colonels back into this basketball game. Uh, Jones with seven, and KJ with that last second basket has six. So again, you're scoring half, Lamar 33, Nichols 29. We'll come back, take a break, and when we return here from Jeremiah Buford, the senior out of Atlanta, Georgia. A couple terrific games back to back against LSU and Sam Houston, 14 points and 15 points respectively. Talk to him about his background, third year with the program. He was a, initially a transfer from Georgia Highland. So we'll catch up with him and then we'll get you stats and ready for the second half. Again, your scored halftime, Lamar 33, Nichols 29. Colonels trying to get to one and one in Southland play on the Colonel Sports Radio Network. So we're clear now until this interview goes. Just get ready with the scores. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not hearing any of the program. Like when Yeah, because you're down. Okay. But they have our mics on right now, so. Okay. It's, that's why it's, I, I turn it down so you don't have to hear an echo in yeah. case that happens. But yeah, if you want to hear it, you just boost it. Okay. Down. Hey, man, you, you didn't turn this down.
Back here in Thibodeau, where we are at halftime between Lamar and Nichols. Lamar leading it 33-29. And these two teams also fair, fair, or squaring off, I should say, in women's basketball. Uh, Nichols State coming off their win Saturday against Sam Houston State, looking for their first road win of the season. Thus far, not going so well. 33-14, Lamar, they are just about at the end of the first half. Alex Bolzova leading the Lady Colonels with six points. Meanwhile, in Southland action, there are five games on the slate, including this one. Incarnate Ward taking on Northwestern State, both looking for their first D1 victory of the season. And in the second half with 12-13 to go, it is the Cardinals leading the Demons 48-39. to Meanwhile, Abilene Christian taking on Houston Baptist. Abilene Christian, 73rd in the first edition of the NCAA net rankings, the highest ranked Southland institution, 18th in the mid-major top 25, and they lead Houston Baptist 37-25 as they are almost at halftime, 37 seconds remaining in the half. Sam Houston State, of course, was here on Saturday. They are continuing their tour of Louisiana as they are in Hammond. The, uh, the Lions down 37-19. They are the worst shooting team in the conference, and we will uh, see them again here soon as well. And it's 37-19, the Lions here Saturday night. I was going to say Nichols would have had something to say about that <laughs> if they didn't pick it up a little bit in this game. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Meanwhile, at halftime, New Orleans taking on Central Arkansas. Nichols travels to Conway to take on the Bears next Saturday. And the Bears led by DeAndre Jones, who recently uh, over McNeese got his 1,000th career point, the 20th Bear to do that. And... At halftime, it is the Privateers leading the Bears 41 to 38. So that is the look around the Southland. Meanwhile, in the top 25 action, just eight games tonight. Virginia Tech, the 19th ranked team in the country, falls to Louisville 73-71. SEC showdown between Arkansas and number nine, Tennessee, it is the Volunteers leading at 69-61 with 341 left to play. Halftime and the Cougars, the 11th ranked team, Houston, down to Wichita State, 31-25. Wichita State looking to go 3-0 in the American. Michigan leading Minnesota. They are early, 11-7. The Wolverines, the 10th ranked team in the country. The Gophers, the 16th ranked team. Duke and Boston College are doing battle as well. Duke, the 21st ranked team in the country. And they are down 18-17 with 12.08 to play in the first. Later, it is Oklahoma at number two, Baylor, Seton Hall at number seven, Creighton, and Wake Forest at number 22, Virginia. There was one other top 25 matchup that was scheduled, but postponed as the 23rd ranked Billikens were set to go to LaSalle, but that game was postponed. And then finally in the NBA, the New Orleans Pelicans, 7.35 to play in the first half. They lead the Oklahoma City Thunder. 41 to 40. Again, here 33 29, Lamar leading Nichols. We'll be back with the second half and we'll get you set for it with some stats and look ahead to the second half action. You're listening to Colonel's Basketball on the Colonel's Radio Network.
Back in Thibodeau, getting set for the second half. Lamar leading Nichols, 33 to 29. Jack Benjamin, Paul Boron with you. Well, it was looking, Paul, like Nichols was going to be in major trouble. 25-10, Lamar jumped on them early. They were hitting from all areas of the court. Davion Buster was pretty much a microwave oven when he stepped into the, onto the floor here. Nichols and Lamar cooled off. Nichols won a 13-0 run. They got to within two. And here we are, four-point game at the half. We look at this stat sheet from the first half. I think for me, a couple things stick out. Obviously, the three-point shooting is one thing, but you know, a, a big one too. Two teams that we would talk about needing to get to the free throw line. Seven combined free throws taken, and then you know, another stat: two teams that like to force turnovers. Only six combined turnovers. A pretty cleanly played first half. Yeah, which we uh, we really wanted to see. Uh Nichols protecting the basketball. That was one of the things we talked about, and they've done a great job of that. And I think the Colonels, you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but they seem to have success when they took the ball to the basket. They created a few second chance opportunities. I'd like to see more of that in the second half as uh, they're right in this game after that Kevin Johnson buzzer beat. So starters both ways to begin the second half. Buster, Jefferson, Harrison, Sullivan, and Cop for Lamar. Forns, Jones, Johnson, Garvin, and Lyons. Lyons has two fouls out there for Nichols. Lamar again in the... Road blacks with the white numbering and lettering. Nichols home whites, red numbering, lettering, and trim. Colonels have only led at halftime once this, actually, though they've led, uh, yeah, they've only led once this season at halftime. That was against Idaho State. So trying to flip the trend of losing games with a trail at the half. Lamar, meanwhile, last year when trailing at the half was just one and eighth or one and six this season with the only win being a comeback against ULM, a game they won in dramatic fashion after trailing by 14. Lamar starts with an attack in the left too. Both of these teams trying to get to one and one in south in place. Sullivan left block, backs down Raji Lyons very patiently, floats in a righty hook, and Lamar is on the board on the first trip of this second half. 35-29, 30 seconds elapsed. 2-3 zone look for Lamar against the Nichols team that right now is struggling mightily to put the ball in the basket from three-point range. Kevin Johnson, right wing, now works to the angle. Back at Andre Jones, right wing triple. Back iron, another miss. Offensive rebound, though, Najee Garvin. Down the lane, trying to find a cutting Jones. He lost it. Up ahead to Harrison, one-on-one -on -one with Johnson. Takes him inside, banks it up and in with the right hand. Boy, that could have been an and one very easily. Crafty finish by Harrison, the freshman out of Beaumont. And Lamar has pushed the lead back to eight points, 37-29. A quick four out of the gates for the Cardinals who come in two and eight losers of their last three, but again, I've played 10 Division I opponents. Inside Raji Lyons, and he missed a jam, but a foul. Oh man, Avery Sullivan can't believe it. That's his second foul. It's one of those where you wonder sometimes if the officials are waiting to see if the ball goes in the basket before they blow the whistle. And Raji will get a couple of free throws. Yeah, that was definitely a late whistle. And Raji, you know, wishes he could have put that one away. Uh, he put both hands on his head after after going back iron on that dunk. First free throw is nothing but nylon for Raji, who this season is now 7 for 11 at the line. Career 58% free throw shooter. How about this? He's got 25 blocks over his last 19 games coming, and he's been a shot-blocking machine. The problem is he hasn't always been on the court because of foul trouble. Meanwhile, he misses the second free throw. Up ahead, Buster. Right wing triple is short. Rebound Raji, and outlets to Andre Jones. Seven-point Lamar Lee, 90 seconds gone, second half. Here in Thibodeau, Nichols trying to avoid back-to-back -back home losses to start Southland play. Kevin Johnson wheels off a double team, left wing, steps through, that's a foul on Cop. They got too much into his grill, and it's a reach-in on Cop, which is his second. And the team's third, all uh, make it their uh, second already in the second half. Yeah, you could see Lamar was trying to pin Kevin Johnson over on that sideline, but Cop just uh, got the left arm in there a little too aggressively and uh, draws the foul. So Jones goes right wing for Forns. They work it back around to Kevin Johnson. On the left against Buster, finds Forns. Left corner three, back iron miss, another one, and Nichols is one for 14. So they're one for 14 today. They were three for 21 on Saturday against Sam Houston. You do the math as Cop misses a left wing three, and they're four for their last, now 35 from three. Kevin Johnson dancing on Jefferson to the left point. Back outside, Najee Garvin steps inside the arc, long two. That's not a good shot. I'll tell you who would have a field day with that one is 
It was at Sam uh, Hinky, the, uh, the president of the Golden Sixers back in the day, and the, the mathematics guy. <laughs> All the analytics in the yeah. NBA, that long foot of the line, too. Yeah, if you're going to shoot from that far out, you might as well get behind the line. Well, now she's only made one three-pointer this season. Harrison dances on Jones, kicks at the cop. Left corner, three splash. That's all set up by Cason Harrison, the crafty point guard. Cop buries his first three of the night. He's got nine. And Lamar has a double-digit lead again. 40 to 30, they've scored. Out of the gates here in the second half, seven of eight. Yep. Garvin seven, one, straight one, away, one. free throw line is good. I needed that. So he knocks down about a 16-footer, and Nichols is, and they just switched it up on the scoreboard. It should be 40 to 32 as Cobb good. goes down the lane, blocked away by Garvin. Outlet pass up ahead, Andre Jones. Looks ahead, goes behind the back, curls it up and in with a scoop off the glass. Oh, add it to the highlight reel. Andre Jones putting a couple defenders on skates, caresses it up and in off the glass, and Nichols is back within six on one of the more spectacular layups you'll ever see. Yeah, that was unbelievable. You talk about he is a highlight film. Well, that was highlight material right there. Put it on Sports Center. 40 to 34. Down the lane. Harrison blocked away by Raji. Up ahead to KJ. And oh, Andre threw that pass into the bench. And subs are coming on for Nichols. Boy, that hurts. It felt like one of those momentum swings. Yeah, Lyons got the block. Tick Price was not happy. He thought Lyons had his left arm into the body. But uh, Lyons gets the block, and then they turn it over. That would have been a, a big opportunity to cut it to four. Almost a hockey line type shift here for Austin Claunt. Spencer, Ty Gordon, and Inquavius Pollard in, along with Jones and Lyons. Cop Buster, and now... Bennett, who just checked in for Lamar, along with Harrison and Sullivan, the five for Lamar. Cardinals with it, approaching four gone second half, up by six, and there's a moving screen. Much to the disbelief of Case and Harrison as he uh, looks <laughs> very sadly at the official, like, really? <laughs> yeah, Tick Price can't believe it either. I'll tell you what, you talk about guys doing a terrific job at, at mid-major programs. Tick Price is right there. He arrived here in 2013-14. Uh, he was an interim coach for a little while, took over. They had gone 4-32 and in conference play the previous couple of years. Here's Spencer from the right corner, drills a three right in front of the Nichols bench. How about Spencer off the bench? He's already got a season high of six points, a couple of triples, and Nichols is back within three. You can hear the come on from an adamant Austin Clunch. In that white polo on the Nichols bench, Harrison gets downhill, kick out Cop, right wing, triple, got it again. Wow. Anderson Cop from three. He didn't shoot it well last year, only about 29%, but he's capable. Ty Gordon, right wing, three, rattles one down. Boy, did Ty need that. Finally gets one to drop. His first three today, he's one for five, his first points. Nichols within three. Back-to-back -back triples for the Colonels. Hopefully that starts a trend for them. Can they get a stop? Down 43-40. to 40. Harrison turns the corner. Back at top. Three in a row? Nope, not that time. Missed it short. Spencer skies for a two-hand rebound. Up ahead to Gordon with a three here. We can Nichols can tie the game. Gordon unloads on a right-wing three and drills it again. Back-to-back -back threes. And we're tied at 43. Bennett, right baseline, 12-footer pure. Lamar just won't go away. They refuse to not respond. Bennett, another field goal. So he's got four, and Lamar back up two. 45-43, what's turned into a fun one here at Stouffer. Five and a half to go. You can hear Austin Claunch barking out defensive signs, and there's a foul offensively again on Nichols, and this one goes on Pollard as a moving screen. 14-27, second half, we'll take a break. Lamar 45, Nichols 43, the Colonels finally getting going from distance after, after a first half where they just couldn't buy one from three, going one for 12, three for five to start the second, they're down two on the Colonel Sports Radio Network.
Megan Thibodeau, 45-43. The Lamar lead is two, 14-27 to go. Second half in Thibodeau. Nichols playing the second of a three-game Southland Conference opening homestand against the Cardinals. They've got Southeastern here on Saturday. Jack Benjamin, Paul Boron back with you. Both of these teams shooting very well to start the second half. Lamar, 5 of 10. Nichols, 5 of 8. And finally, knocking down some three-pointers, Paul. Yeah, a couple big three-pointers by uh, Spencer and by Gordon hitting a couple. And uh, the Colonel's actually out shooting Lamar now just by mere percentage points. Both teams just over 41%. Lamar with it. Black jerseys attacking the left hoop up by two. Entry feed from Cop stolen away by Pierce Spencer. Nichols can tie or retake their first lead since it was 2-0 here. Garvin inside, righty floater is good. Gar We're tied up at 45. Garvin set that up with uh, reaching in on one end and he gets the finish on the other. Cop turns the corner right into Kevin Johnson. That's a blocking foul and an and one. That's brutal for Kevin Johnson. I'll tell you what happened, Paul. He's going to recover to the corner shooter. He slipped and because he fell down, Cop just accidentally ran over him and it turns into an and one. Yeah, unfortunate for the Colonels. Uh, it's not like uh, Kevin Johnson was really out of position, but uh, again, another slip on that end of the floor. Yeah, he's got, uh, looking at KJ's stat sheet, six points, two rebounds, an assist, and probably five slips. <laughs> so Anderson Kopp a chance for a three-point play. He's been terrific, 14 points. It has taken him 14 shots. He's knocked down a couple threes. He's got six rebounds. A guy who they've just been waiting to get going in Beaumont. And he knocks down the free throw. Terrific free throw shooter for a terrific free throw shooting team. So Cop's got 15, and Lamar has a seven-point lead. 13.48 to go. Kevin Johnson knifes inside. Back door to Pollard to lay it in with the right hand off the glass. Beautiful dish from Kevin Johnson. Third assist. Sets it up for Pollard. He just put it on a platter. Pollard's got six a season high, and Nichols... Well, I had the yeah, score wrong. Yeah. I was going to say, no, the, I was wondering yeah. how we got down seven. And yeah. that <laughs> the scoreboard here in the arena <laughs> was giving Lamar a lot of credit oh, on points. <laughs> Davion Buster from the right angle. Misfires on a three. Rebound tipped twice. Pollard saved it to Gordon. What a play. <laughs> Nichols can regain the lead with a basket. Gordon splits two, goes inside, lost the ball going up. That should be Nichols' ball, and it is. That's fortunate. Kind of slipped out of his hands. And the stoppage means that Andre Jones can check back in. There's just been a different energy when he's on the court today. Pollard sits, Jones comes back in, Nichols goes small. So largest player out there is Garvin at 6'7". And Lamar counters with Sullivan, who's their one forward as well. He's 6'8". So it's true small ball right now. Nichols looking for their first lead since it was 2-0. So uh, a chance to take the lead here in the second half. Approaching 13 to go, Nichols down a point. Garvin against Sullivan, hop step inside. Righty floater rolls around and drops. He just shakes his head saying, nah man, you can't guard me. First lead since it was two nothing for Nichols, 49-48. Under 13 to go here in Thibodeau. This crowd finally getting into it. Bennett against Gordon, between the legs finds Sullivan. Right baseline, Jefferson around a screen. Spencer fell, Sullivan goes into the body of Garvin who they say flopped and he banks it in, and now they're calling a flop on Garvin. Wow. Austin Clodge is beside himself. They gave it a flopping call on Garvin, which I, I gotta be honest, I can't completely disagree with because there wasn't a lot of contact, but there was some contact. I, I think well, I, I th yeah, I think my question becomes, Najee's lying on the ground trying to get up. The official waited five seconds right. to make the call. Right. Why, the, why the delay? If you're yeah. going to call it, call yeah, it. Yeah, call it immediately. I yeah. think he <laughs> did get hit. But, yeah, that's a, that's probably a play through no call. Right. So 50-49 Lamar becomes a warning. And one more, you get a technical foul. 12.36 to go. Andre Jones walks it up the right side of the court for Nichols. 12.30 to go. Second conference game for both teams who lost their south and openers on Saturday. Najee Garvin faces up on Sullivan at the free throw line. Wants to take him inside, spins, righty hook, crawls over the front of the rim and drops. And he makes that little sign of you're too small, although he's given up about 20 <laughs> pounds, so I don't know you can say that. 51-50, Nichols back in front. But he might be right. He might not be able to guard him. That's two straight possessions. He's looked great down low. Now Harrison <laughs> just put Jones in the dispenser and draws a foul. He completely turned Jones around. He 
spun him like a top, and he's got free throws coming. Foul is called. Did they call, did they get that one on Kevin Johnson? Yeah, they, I think, they gave it to Kevin Johnson. Boy, that and hurts. on top of that, he's limping a little bit after that yeah. play, and he's asking to come to the bench for that's a moment. A, that's a big call. He's not the guy you want reaching in on that weak side help. So interesting for Austin Clunch here. Instead of going with, you would think, either a, a Buford or somebody else, he's going with Raji Lines to go big. Harrison's first free throw misses. So a guy who came in 82% at the line has now missed two free throws. Raji is in along with Garvin, so you get the big front line now for Nichols, along with Jones, Gordon, and Spencer, and one more here for Casey Harrison. The only thing you hope for with Lyons coming in is that he doesn't take that space on the offensive end away from Garvin down low because Garvin's done so right. well in those last couple possessions. There's been so much room to operate. Yeah. That's a great point. Well, we're knotted up at 51. Under 12 to go. Pierce Spencer is at a couple of threes. Between the rings to Garvin. Now Gordon straight away. Triple, you bet. From long range, Ty Gordon just shaking his head down the court, looking at Bennett, and Nichols up three. 54-51. There's a swat by Gordon off the pass from Jefferson, but he saved it right to Sullivan, blocked off the backboard by Lyons, and a foul. That's a helter-skelter <laughs> sequence if I've ever seen one. The energy is back in the building. Sullivan is down in some pain. I think he just lost his shoe, and he's okay. Just making sure. Yeah, it looks like he's all right. That's the third foul on Lions, and that takes us to an under 12 media timeout. I'll tell you what, when you've lost five in a row, good to see some energy and some fight out of this Colonels group. Gritty effort here tonight, 54-51. Nichols, 11.36 to go, trying to get back to 500 in Southland play on the Colonel Sports Radio Network. largest lead of the game, believe it or not, for Nichols at three points over Lamar. 11.36 to go with Paul Boron, Jack Benjamin with you. It was a four-point lead for Lamar at the half. They led by as many as 15 in the first half. Nichols has flipped that around completely here, Paul, and finally getting some shots to go down. They're four for six from three in the second half and have gotten nice sparks from Ty Gordon and Najee Garvin. Suddenly shooting 27% from three-point range, which doesn't sound great, but when it was 9% before, that is a great improvement for the Colonels. Avery Sullivan's at the line out of the timeout for Lamar. He makes the first free throw, senior from Pflugerville, Texas, who comes in at 89.7%. Good for the best mark in the Southland Conference, and he makes both free throws and brings Lamar back to within one. So Sullivan's got 13 points and eight rebounds. He had 24 and eight on this court last February. One point lead for Nichols. Under 11 and a half to go, Ty Gordon splits a double team. Down the lane, kick out Spencer, right corner, three, another one. He puts the three fingers in the air. How about the freshman coming alive? A season high, nine off the bench, and Nichols by 457-53. Three of four from the arc for Spencer, and he has been a spark for sure. Well, he had a sensational career in high school. Was a standout at Lake Creek. Averaged 25 per as a senior. He can stroke and he's showing all that. Down to eight in the timer. Sullivan left block against Lions. Jones doubles. Ball knocked away. Taken by Cop. Blocked away by Spencer. Shot clock violation. They'll let them play on. Nichols by four and running. Gordon behind the back. Slows it down. Peels back out. Now he turns again to Lions inside. Pivots. Finds Gordon. 
Right wing passed up the three on Kopp, who stayed right with him, and Austin Clunch now barking out of play. This crowd is alive now. Nichols by four, shot clock to 10. Gordon down the lane, up and under is good. He banked it home. Ty coming alive. 11 points now for Gordon as Harrison tries to turn the corner from Lamar, comes up short on a floater, Cop gets it back. No, rebound, Harrison missed it. Back to Cop. left elbow jumper misses, and finally Spencer rebounds. A crazy sequence there, and Nichols can slow it down. 59-53 lead with 9.54 to go. Andre Jones behind the Garvin screen. Works his way into the paint. That's an offensive foul, and if that one's on Raji Lyons, it's number four. Yeah, he uh, tried to create a little space with the uh, backside and clear it out, and that was a pretty easy call for the official underneath. So Davion Buster, who got a lengthy rest, checks back in. Cop and Jefferson sit. Buster had nine points in, what, the opening four minutes, hasn't scored since. He started three of four from the floor, so he's missed his last eight shots. Yeah, I was just leaning over the rail to make sure he was on the bench because yeah. he had been out for so long. Tariq Issa is back in as well. So Harrison Issa and then Bennett, Sullivan, and Buster the five for Lamar. 59-53, Nichols leads. Approaching 9.30 to go, Harrison beat Spencer down the lane and laid it in with the left hand. One of the few mistakes I think Spencer has made tonight. He just got beat that time. Harrison's a crafty-looking player. Another basket for the freshman who's got 11. And they're back within four on Lamar. Andre Jones works off a screen to the right wing, hands off Kevin Johnson against Buster. Takes him inside, bounce pack, back door, beautifully done. So Pollard laid it in. Just a little give and go inside, and Pollard's got eight points off the bench. Nichols is a team, how about this stat, Paul? 28 to four in bench points. Yeah, Spencer, Pollard, both those guys have definitely given them a lift off the bench. Under nine to go, six point Nichols lead, 61-55. It feels like they've got six guys playing defense without far out on the floor, Austin clutches. And there's a reaching foul away from the ball on Andre, no, it's not on Andre Jones, it's actually on Spencer. So that's number six on Nichols. Lamar's now one shy of getting into the bonus. That's significant because we talked about it, Paul, they shoot free throws at a terrific clip, about 73%. Yeah, really don't want to let the Cardinals go to the line and uh, a lot of time left to Davion, put them in the bonus. Davion Buster lops down low to Sullivan. I think he got stuck under the basket, maybe partially blocked by Garvin. Gordon up ahead to Garvin, down the lane he goes. Thought he got fouled and he did. It's a reaching, let's see if they call it in the act or shooting. And it's on Harrison. Looks like it's gonna be on the floor. That's two on Harrison, four on Lamar as a team. So Nichols will inbound right baseline, 8.35 to go, leading by 6 points, 61-55. Again, both teams dropped their conference opener Saturday. Lamar to ACU and Nichols to Sam Houston. Really a must-have for the Colonels here at home. Gar Garvin down the lane, goes up to jam it in his foul. Well, he had it at the left wing, and he's quicker than Sullivan. He's got the quick disadvantage. He beat him to the spot, and he'll get free throws. Sullivan was funny. He, he looked like he wanted to protest, like... That he did not commit the foul, and then he kind of had that realization. Yeah, I felt. <laughs> so 8.32 clock, stop second half, 61-55 lead for Nichols. Garvin goes to the line for two. He's only 60% at the line this season. Nichols has struggled mightily at the line. That trend continues. So they're three for seven today. They actually shot about 80% of their opener against UC Davis, Paul. Since that game, they're 59% over their last seven now. One more here for Garvin, who's played a great game. 12 points, seven rebounds, and rims around and in the second free throw. The lead is seven for Nichols, 62-55 with 8.30 to go. And the question now is, can they close it out? Just keep playing that aggressive lockdown defense. They've been aggressive on the ball handler, and they've been crashing the boards. Gordon pressures Harrison near midcourt, works to the right angle, whips a pass to Bennett, left corner, tries a three, it was blocked by Jones, rebound went right to Isa, and down the lane, <laughs> Bennett lays it in. Jones, well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> Jones looked skyward, because he couldn't believe after the block that uh, one of his teammates didn't come down with it. Five point lead for Nichols, 62-57. Garvin passed up on a left wing three. 
Goes to Kevin Johnson instead, off a screen, lobs it up on a floater, and it rolls around and in. That hit every centimeter to the rim for KJ. Another basket for him, and now he's got eight points. Nichols back up seven. Down the lane, Harrison drops off Bennett. That's well done. Missed the layup, goes back up, waits, he's blocked and fouled. Ooh. And free throws coming. Pollard thought he had it clean, might have got the body from behind, but uh, good defense regardless by him. Unfortunately, the Cardinals will be going to the free throw line. Awfully close. And free throws at the other side of the media timeout. So, 7.34 to go in Thibodeau. Nichols 64, Lamar 57. The Colonels have come all the way back from 15 down to lead by seven as they try to stop this five game skin and go to one and one in South and play on the Colonel Sports Radio Network. Back in Thibodeau, seven point lead for Nichols, 64-57 over Lamar, 7.34 to go. They turned what was once a 15 point first half deficit into a seven point lead, 22 point turnaround. With Paul Boron, Jack Benjamin with you, second of a three game Southland Conference opening homestand for Nichols. And they've turned it around, Paul, with the three point shooting. They're five for seven, three in the second half. Yeah, they are uh, shooting well, they're defending well. Uh, you know, uh, even a couple of the baskets that Lamar has gotten the, the three-pointers by uh, Cop. It was after penetration where they had collapsed so aggressively on defense that they got an open shot, but the, the defense has been great just collapsing in the lane and not giving the Cardinals anything easy at the basket. So 7.34 to go, seven-point Nichols lead, and Quinlan Bennett is at the free throw line for two. He's a 54% shooter this season. And the line drive on the first one is true. Lamar now seven for nine at the line today. We mentioned that could be a factor if it becomes a free throw game because as a team, they're the third best in the conference at 73%. Bennett, a junior from Chicago, transferred in from Triton College in Illinois where he was an all-conference player last year, makes both free throws at the five-point game. 64-59, the lead for Nichols. Under seven and a half to go here at Stouffer. Well, they went 13 and one last year, but lost their Southland opener on Saturday against Sam Houston. Kevin Johnson, a contested right wing catch against Buster. Crossing over, uses a garbage screen to the right elbow. Ball knocked away, a couple bodies loose for it on the floor. It's a tie up and possession arrow stays thankfully with Nichols. So they have eight to shoot, 7-12 on the game clock up by five. A little nervy there and you know we talked about the, the turnovers late in the game against Sam Houston nearly turning the ball over there got to protect the basketball can't give away possessions with this five-point lead it's Jones Garvin Gordon Johnson Spencer is Nick Vallow the great manager of uh, the Nichols team wipes up some sweat eight to shoot Gordon has it in the right corner drives kicks Gordon now Garvin right elbow falls away no Spencer flying in on the weak side is fouled going up for a putback and he'll have free throws coming so how about the freshman from Porter Texas and his activity today he entered with a total this season of five points he's already today got nine on three three-pointers and a chance to add to that at the line with a couple free throws and he came in as you mentioned from the weak side flying in there took a shot to the nose you could see him kind of squinting and and uh feeling that shot but uh good aggression by the freshman Tariq Issa back in Sullivan sits for Lamar so you figure a pretty crucial sequence for them offensively Pierce at the line, one more free throw coming, and he misses both, and Nichols now today is four for nine from the free throw line. 
And it stays a five-point game. Free throws are just killing them this season. 64-59, under seven to go. Isa back door to Bennett, touch pass Harrison. Up top, Buster, floater in the lane is true. Davion Buster, first point since the opening couple of minutes. He's got 11 points on four for 13 from the field. He's been in double figures every game this year, and Lamar back within three. 64-61, approaching six and a half to go. Andre Jones right baseline, works against Isaac, gets right by him to the rim, and off the glass and through the cup for two with a scoop. Love the aggression by Jones, just kind of patiently dribbled and then attacked the basket. He would not be denied there. He's got a second straight game and double figures with 11. Harrison turns the corner, can't finish a scoop off glass. Rebound Jones to Spencer, left wing three, can't cash it in, it's long. Rebound tipped to Harrison, it goes out of bounds, and they say Lamar ball. You know, that's a call where, frankly, I, I think Andre Jones fouled him, but it looked like the ball was off Lamar, and maybe that's a call where you give it a makeup because it probably was a foul. Maybe. It, it certainly looked like it was off of Lamar, but uh, Austin Clunch uh, not arguing too much on that. The six, little shake of the head. The six minutes to play. Harrison at the controls. The crafty freshman point guard with a left-hand waist-high dribble over to Bennett on the right baseline. Backs out near the right angle, goes to the right elbow, over to Isa, tries a right corner triple, it's short, just grazed the iron, and Spencer comes out of the pack with a rebound, and Austin Clonch at the top of his lungs, yelling for the team to slow things down. Well, that was a dangerous pass by Andre Jones, almost over and back. Ty Gordon works his way to the right elbow, kick out to Spencer, deflected, he got it back though on the left wing, to Garvin, down the lane, and punches home, a vicious right-handed stuff. Oh, Najee. And that one to the highlight reel. 15 points for Garvin, and Nichols back to their largest lead at seven points. 68-61, 5.15 to go. Bennett to Harrison, and Lamar just searching for some answers here offensively. One for their last five from the floor. Approaching five to go in Thibodeau. Harrison turns the corner, throws it up off the side of the backboard, and a blocking foul is called on Pierce Spencer at the right block. You know, you mentioned it a few minutes ago that sometimes it seems like the officials wait to see the results of the shot. I think that was that case again because I think Spencer did commit the foul. He moved in a little late, but there wasn't a lot of contact. I think the refs were going to let it go, but when they saw the shot didn't go, they, they blew the whistle. 68-61, Nichols. Lamar at the line, though, with 5.01 to go, trying to cut this inside of seven points. Case and Harrison today is four for 10 from the floor, he's got 11 points. He's three for five though at the line. Left-handed free throw shooter, and it's up and through on the first. So Andre Jones comes oh, into the free throw area. He was already in the game, so. Actually a sub made by Lamar. So they bring in Corey Nickerson, sophomore from Houston, six foot seven, 190, so he gives them some athleticism. Yeah, first time Nickerson's been in the game and comes in a key period of the basketball game with 5.01 left. So Harrison makes both free throws to make it a five-point game. Nichols ball and even five minutes to go in Thibodeau. Colonel's trying to bounce back from their home loss and their Southland opener on Saturday. Andre Jones with it for the Colonels. Down low, Garvin against Nickerson. Goes up with a righty hook and scores. And he does put his hand to the floor saying you're too small at Nickerson because, of course, they're both 6'7". <laughs> 70-63, oh. there's a vicious stuff on Bennett by Jones. Down the lane, up with the layup, no. Got the rebound, bank shot, no. Second try is good. And Andre Jones is just laughing at his inability to make a layup. <laughs> but he's putting this team on his back with his athleticism and his heart. Nichols by nine, largest lead of the night. 72-63, approaching four to go. Cop takes Spencer inside, who stayed straight up and blocked the shot. Three on two, Spencer to the lane, lob try for Garvin, not a good one. Stolen away by Bennett. Out of the pack on the right wing, he stops and slows down for Harrison. Cop lobs it, Nickerson missed a layup though. I think Jones might have gotten a piece, and if not, it was just a missed layup try from point blank range. Chaotic sequence, Nichols will slow things down. 3.50 to go, Austin Clark barking out of play. Nichols up nine, 3.45 left, Jones handles, at the end, logo at midcourt. <laughs> Against Harrison at the top of the arc, between the rings, right elbow, bounce feed Garvin. Down low, Nickerson fades away from six, comes up short, and Buster rebounds for Lamar. Big possession here, three-pointer, they're back within two possessions. 
Buster to Bennett at the left point, guarded by Spencer, and he'll back it down and slow it. Lamar runs some clock. Bennett against Spencer at the top of the arc. Crosses over, steps inside, 16-footers true. Quinlan Bennett, good-looking player, averaging 10 per game coming in. He's got 12. 72-65, Lamar back within seven with three minutes left. Felt like the Cardinals really needed that basket to stay in touch with the Colonels. Let's see if they can put it away here. Ty Gordon, right wing triple, back iron miss. Offensive rebound, Pierce Spencer, and wisely throws it back out. Fresh 20 on the shot clock, 2.50 to go. Nichols by seven. Kevin Johnson, the senior point guard, who's playing in his 100th career game here today, sees the clock. Down to six, down to five. KJ, step back, left wing triple. Heel of the rim, miss. And cop rebounds for Lamar. Trying to creep a little closer, down seven. Top to Harrison, right corner, crosses over into the lane. Outside Bennett, passed up a three, takes Jones to the right elbow, has to back it out. Terrific defense right now. Bennett crossing over, bump no call, to the corner and Buster, corner three, off the side of the iron, rebound Garvin. Fantastic defensive possession there by the Colonels. Aggressive, they didn't commit the foul and they, they made it hard on the Cardinals. Austin Clodge has thought about calling a timeout on about 15 occasions for the last three <laughs> minutes. And finally, he takes one here with 2.02 to play. So Nichols 72, Lamar 65, both teams in scoring droughts. Nichols has not scored in two minutes, and we'll take a break right here. 2.02 to go, Nichols by seven, trying to close out Lamar and go to one and one in Southland play on the Colonel Sports Radio Network. Back at Thibodeau, 157, oh, a bigger part, and 202 to go. Nichols leading Lamar, 72-65, 202 to play. Colonels trail by as many as 15 in the, in the first half. They trailed by four at halftime, and here they are now with a seven-point lead, trying to move to one and one in Southland play and close out the Cardinals, second of three, to start Southland play here at home for Nichols. Jack Benjamin, Paul Boron with you. Nichols won for their last seven, Paul, but defensively they have been terrific. Yeah, really, really aggressive defending and, and not giving the Cardinals any kind of open looks. And feels like here with uh, 19 on the shot clock, if they can get a good shot here, they they almost can put, put a stamp on this basketball game if they can get a good shot here. Now, Tick Price is talking to the officials right now about something. I think he's been disappointed with a couple of foul calls. The situation is as such, it's Nichols' ball. The clock right now, I think, is off. They, they've got to reset it. They've had some issues here today. Now, <laughs> we will say this. They are low-staffed here at Nichols. Yeah, we're, 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 always, yeah. we're always short-staffed right. here at Nichols, but uh, they do a tremendous job with, with what they have. So when you have three people having to do five different jobs, it's, you know, not the easiest. Yep. The clock right now is reading two. Yeah, there had to be two more seconds. I don't know if the shot clock is correct either. I'll check on that. Our officials are now conversing about that. To reset this for you, 202 to play. Nichols by seven, 72-65 over Lamar. Nichols eight fouls, Lamar six. So both teams in the bonus rest of the way. But if you're Nichols with a big lead, you really want to avoid fouling and stopping the clock. Jones, Lyons, Johnson. And then Gordon and Garvin, the five for Nichols. Leading by seven, 10 to shoot out of the timeout. Gordon left wing, bounce feed Garvin, left baseline extended. Backing down on Smith, backing, backing, spins baseline, tough fall away from 10, swish. 
Najee Garvin having himself a night. 19 points a season high, and Nichols leads Lamar 74-65. 90 seconds to play here in Thibodeau. Smith pull up straight on is good. So Lincoln Smith seeing his first action junior from Columbus comes in, makes an immediate impact. That's not easy to do. You sit on the bench for 38 minutes, right. brings Lamar back within seven. Ty Gordon dribbling out the clock. Lamar does not have to foul yet. And they're in a great spot because only six fouls, Paul. They'll be in the one and one for a while. I would say you play out this possession if you're Lamar. One minute to go even. Jones trying to drive on Bennett. Turns the corner to the right elbow. Hop step inside. Left hand off glass. No. Rebound tipped twice. Taken by Raji Lyons. And now if you're Lamar, you do have to foul. It's a three possession game. I'm shocked that they aren't. Yeah, they seem kind of reserved to to their fate here and finally they're bringing some pressure and, and, and now they get the foul. Yeah, now they give it and they let, what, seven or eight seconds mm -hmm. run off the clock. That's surprising. The rebounds will kill you. Foul is on Smith. This will become a one and one for Kevin Johnson and with 43 seconds left, if Nichols can make their free throws, which is a very big if these days in Thibodeau, they can try to ice this one away. Yeah, and that's one reason I'm kind of surprised Dick Price didn't have his team foul because Nichols has not proven it at the line so far. I, th I think you'd rather take your chances with the Colonels shooting the basketball at the charity strike. That's a great point. 30-second timeout, by the way, was called by Tick Price. While we have a moment here, Paul, why don't we get a Southland Conference scoreboard update, take a look around the uh, Southland and see how people are doing. Uh, Incarnate Ward gets their first Southland victory wow, of the big year. big upset. Yeah, 75-67 as they go up to Nagadish and knock off the Demons. Uh, Incarnate Ward, 4-4 four and four on the season now. I'll tell you what, that's a heck of a job that UIW is doing. Pick to finish last in the conference, 4-4. Four and four, and that, That's impressive stuff from the Cardinals so far. We talked about Abilene Christian being the highest ranked uh, Southland team in the adjusted net rankings, and uh, they are up 7, 55-48 with 8.51 to play in the second. Sam Houston State is up in Hammond, and they are up 18 with 9.02 to play. Again, the Lions here on Saturday night. 7.15 to play in Conway, and it is a tight ball game between the Privateers and the Bears, 68-67. The Privateers leading it, and in women's basketball action, Lamar pulling away from Nichols, 52-30. So you heard there our Southland Conference scoreboard update. Do stick around after the game for our post-game show. We'll get Austin Clanch over here. Again, we're sponsored by Louisiana's Cajun Bayou. Discover the unapologetic Cajun culture of Lafouche Parish. I'll tell you what, I've had my share of uh, Cajun <laughs> culture being around here. You, yeah. you come by and the options are, well, what do you want? You want a po' boy or a jambalaya? That's about it. And it's, boy, it's, it's good, but boy, yeah. <laughs> so free throws for Kevin Johnson. This is a one and one for a guy who, for his career, is 79% at the line. First free throws for him today, and he misses the front end again. Nichols is four for 11 at the line. The door still open for Lamar down seven. Harrison to cop right corner, passed up a three. Smith drives into a thicket. Righty floater off glass, no. Here's Spencer rebounds, goes to Kevin Johnson again, who throws over to Ty Gordon in the backcourt. Lamar not fouling yet, and Ty crosses the midcourt <laughs> line. He chucked in a three from the left wing, which will not count and free throws coming now for Ty Gordon. I'll tell you what, Nichols will, should and probably will get out of here with a win, but this has become, you know, one game you shoot poorly at the free throw line, fine. Two games they start to call it, okay, well there's mm -hmm. something here. Three is a trend. We're not talking about seven straight games of struggles at the line for Nichols. Yeah, it's certainly worrisome, because uh, obviously it's going to bite them at some point if uh, if they don't get it fixed, because these are, these are free points that they're letting get away at the line. Now, Ty, yeah, well, Ty Gordon flips the uh, the script at least, makes his first free throw of the day. He's got a dozen. Ty came in shooting just 68% at the line. And a welcome sight for Austin Claunch. A pair of free throws <laughs> going through the net. Nine-point Nichols lead, 20 seconds left. Just don't foul now. And inside, they find a driving Smith who's come off the bench for Tick Price and scored two buckets, two tough buckets in about... 30 seconds, foul in the backcourt on Gordon. It's back to a seven point game. It begs the question why he hasn't been on the court more because boy, he has flashed some athleticism here. Yeah. Lincoln uh, Smith. He's, he's been impressive uh, in this little bit of time and uh, Tick Price may uh, want to think about using him a little uh, earlier than the 
38 minutes in. That's a long season. <laughs> Ty Gordon, couple more free throws here. He's got 13 points today. Very efficient night for Ty, and he missed the first free throw. So just as I said, he had finally made a couple. He misses. <laughs> Cop down court. Time not the friend of Lamar at this point. Backdoor Smith misses a layup there. Andre Jones rebounds. Sullivan will not foul. Andre will dribble out the clock, and that will do it. So Nichols had to battle from down 15 and in the first half, from down four at halftime, and they shoot it in the second half, 63% from the floor, five for 10 from three, and they come away with a 76-69 win over Lamar to even up their Southland record at one and one and snap their five game losing streak. Uh, again, the, the work they did on the defensive end, I think really triggered a lot of it. Look, when you're missing shots, that doesn't mean you can't work on the defensive end. And, and they worked hard defensively, got a few turnovers, got out in transition, got some easy buckets. They stopped falling in love with the three for a little while there and start going to the basket. And I think those two things were key to them turning things around. And then they did get hot from three-point range. Uh, Pierce Spencer, I think, great lift off the bench. We got Austin Claunch coming over here, and we will uh – have him throw on the, the headset here real quick. Um, big one for uh, Coach here today as he uh, throws on the headset. Um, <laughs> yeah. Here's a stat sheet for you, Coach. All right, so we got Austin Claunch with us now. Coach, uh, finally in, back in the win column. I know this one feels really good. You guys are down 15 early, a, a slow start to battle back the way they did in that kind of fight. And what can you say about the group here today? I'm tired, man. Um, you know, I, we just did. Thanks, guys. You know, we just we made some just some winning plays, and some guys really grew up tonight. Um, Pierce Spencer, Najee Garvin, Andre Jones. I mean, I mean, er, all those guys that, that, that we played, and, and just man, just really proud of this group. We've been through some adversity, I mean, like everyone has. But you know, it's hard. You know, we've had games canceled, and then this is only our. I'm not even sure. I think our eighth game of the year, yeah, maybe, yeah. And, and just. Um, against a really, really tough, well-coached team that always gives us problems. And they came out and had a chip on their shoulder early, and we did it. And then, you know, just to make some of the plays we did in the second half, this is big for us moving forward. Now it's just one game. We got to get we got to get better. Um, but I loved how we guarded coming off the other night. Um, to only force four turnovers is very uncharacteristic of us, but give them a lot of credit. They showed great poise, great toughness. It's just great to get out of here with a win. You know, you hit upon a lot of what I wanted to ask you. Speaking here with Austin Claunch, 76-69 win for Nichols over Lamar back in the win column, 1-1 one one in South of play. You know, last year you win 21 games, you win 15 in conference play, and you win a lot of these dogfight close games, but you've got 11 new guys on the team. And even though you have guys who have come from Division One schools, You've got to learn how to win again with a new group, and they finally, you know, they did that tonight. It has to feel really good to get the guys to come together the way they did. You know, we've talked about it. You don't ever want to learn in a loss, but at the end of the day, we're not clicking at our highest rate yet. And similarly, the same thing happened last year. You know, we won seven of our last eight to finish, and we played good basketball tonight, but we can't start, we can't spot good teams 15 points on a nightly basis, and we showed that the other night when, you know, just because you get up, you know, you've got to fight for 40 minutes, and I just think tonight's a, uh, sort of a culmination of what we've been preaching, winning plays, tough plays, loose balls, really proud of this group. You know, I was saying all night about how it felt like there were six defenders on the floor because you're there in your defensive stance, and I see, you know, you're dripping in sweat right now like you <laughs> always are, but to hold these guys to 38% shooting when they got off the start they did and to contain Davion, I know he got going those first couple minutes and to limit him, what can you say about the defensive effort here today and the way you guys flew around? Just one-on-one -on -one pride. We, we talked about it. It wasn't it wasn't real, you know rotational things or anything like that. It was a focus on getting stops, and I'm just really proud of this group coming out and carrying over from two hard days of practice. Looking at a couple of key contributors, Najee Garvin first, 19 for him, ties a career high from when he was back at UNC Charlotte. He's 9 for 15 for the floor. The mid-range working, the hooks, it, it felt like he just wasn't settling and he was going to get what he wanted all night. But he's been getting, you know, and part of that is he's been getting in the gym. He's been working. He got in here early today. I was really happy to see him. And then eight rebounds is fantastic for him. You know, for us to out-rebound them, that's that's huge for us. I think we're a good rebounding team. I was glad we showed that tonight. Um, so really happy for Najee. Meanwhile, Pierce Spencer, you told me about him coming in, how this is a guy who might see two minutes one night. He might see 25. And, boy, was he good tonight. Three threes off the bench. How about 10 rebounds as well? That's what he does. He's our best rebounding guard. Might be our best rebounder on the team, apparently. Um, but just really proud of him and just being patient. And when your times, when your number's called, you step up. And he showed that tonight.
Coach, appreciate the time as always. Congrats on the dub. Thanks, JB. Go Cardinals. All right, that's Austin Clanch. Big win today for Nichols. They bounce back from the tough loss to Sam Houston State. Moved to 1-1 one and one in Southland play with a 76-69 victory over Lamar. We'll come back, wrap this one up here from Thibodeau on the Colonel Sports Radio Network. Hey, do you want to play as a good one? What do you want? Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, can you get, 